All right, that was a lot of information, but I'm happy to take any questions you might have. I have no guarantees about my answer. James, we did have a question that was asked that has scrolled yeah. on past, but yeah. I think this was it. Uh, what are some common mistakes uh, using some of these tools? Sure. Um, uh, transcription errors, uh, super common. Um, I think uh, not capturing information. I'm, I'm just giving thoughts as I have them. Uh, not capturing information either in the spreadsheet or in the chat, um, information that's helpful to solving the puzzle. Um, uh, there was a suggestion earlier that I meant to put in these slides about um, putting the original ordering in. A lot of times it's useful to reconstruct the original ordering and it can be a real pain to do that after you've resorted by the, the Fibonacci letter of each answer. There's not keeping track of which approaches have been tried and which ones haven't. Yeah, yeah, that's a great one. Um, there is a, a two-part question, but part of it for tech is, uh, how do you identify specialists for types of puzzles like logic puzzle specialist, grid specialist, Pokemon specialist? So um, my advice would be to have uh, in whatever your chat system is to have a general channel, whether that's your own custom thing or in Slack or in Discord. And you can say, hey, this looks like a Sudoku. And you can bring people into the channel. You can ping people in. Um, there's also a thing that we've done on Left Out where before the hunt starts, you have everyone go around, especially if people aren't super familiar with each other, and say the things they're good at, the things they like. Um, and that's a good way to kind of bring all of the uh, Nikolai people onto the Nikolai puzzles. We have a question from Zachary. Uh, can programming puzzles be solved by Googling or should we plan on having a competent coder on the team to stand a chance at finishing? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I think that occasionally there will be, there have been hard programming puzzles that would be very challenging if you had no programming experience uh, to approach. But in my experience, very rarely are the programming problems so hard that you need like optimal algorithms to do it. it you just need to bring more computing power into the yeah. puzzle. You'll, you'll probably need to have a competent coder on the team to, if you want to solve, forward solve, not back solve every single puzzle. However, usually the designers will design things so that if there's some puzzle that requires a very specific ability like strong programming, then they'll have tested the meta to be solvable without that particular answer. So you should be able to finish the hunt even if you don't have an awesome programmer, but you'll have to do better at the other puzzles. We have a question. Uh, do you integrate tools into your team software or do people just go off and use tools on their own and you tend to keep your software to mostly collaboration puzzle tracking? So uh, Czar has um, a mechanism where someone will say, here is a new puzzle. Uh, and then that will automatically generate a spreadsheet and a Slack channel. And people can hop in to the spreadsheet and into the Slack channel. Um, other teams that I've solved in have the same mechanism, but with uh, Google Meet video chats. So there'll also be a Google Meet that appears when you enter a new puzzle. But you don't need any of that. We have that, but you don't need it. You can have a great solving experience without that. OK, let's see. Uh, we have a question. Uh, could you share your top Google Sheets tips, such as column A should be numbered, use monoface, mon monospace font, things like that? Let's see here. Let's go into the appendix. Uh, here's some Sheets tips that I love. So there's a function called index that picks a cell out of an array of cells based on a function. So if you want to pull data out of a big grid, you can use index. Uh, mid is useful for finding a substring in a string. Match lets you look up data. Uh, code and car uh, translate ASCII and text back and forth, which as Weiwad uh, said, like is super useful. It's so common, there's not even a name for it. Filters are really nice because it lets you uh, sort by any column and you can do that really quickly. Merge cells is really useful, actually, because it lets you build hexes if you want to build unusually shaped grids or if you want to spread out across um, multiple columns or multiple rows, which is very useful. These are kind of my main, 
my main spreadsheet tricks when I'm doing spreadsheet magic. One nice advantage of creating a filter is it allows one person to look at the sheet sorted by one column without disturbing how the other players see it sorted by. So if one player is working on one stage of the puzzle where you're trying to sort of solve the clues in order and another player is working on the other stage where after sorting you need to extract a message, you don't step in each other's way. Matt Jackson has asked, how do you build hexes? Something tells me you could quickly demo that in a second. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can demo that. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Am I showing a spreadsheet right now? Are people seeing it? Yep. OK, so if you do this, uh, so actually, let's make everything square. That's very visually pleasing. Uh, and you can go like this. If you take two cells that are horizontally adjacent and sort of make a domino out of it, and you have lots of horizontal dominoes, like little bricks, then you stack them up like a little interweaving brick pattern, then every individual brick actually ends up touching six other bricks. Uh, one on its left, one on its right, and one in each of its like two on the top and two on the bottom. That gives you a geometry that's topologically equivalent to a hex grid. And, uh... Uh, sorry. So you have hexes now. Because this is one, two, three, four, five. Someone suggested using notes instead of comments to avoid email spam. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, that's, a, that's a better way to do it. Um, I did want to add one final thing before I kick it back to Linda, uh, is that a lot of what we've been showing and talking about and referencing, because it, it is our perspective, is uh, a, a bigger team that has been around and our expectations and things like that. And so when you see us demonstrating a giant board cube meta puzzle, your first inclination might be, oh my God, I'm in way over my head. Why should I be doing this? And, and that's not the point at all, really. First of all, you'll have hopefully teammates that will help you. You'd be surprised at the stuff you can figure out over the uh, period of a weekend and not just staring at it for five seconds and trying to figure it out. That, that never happens. But secondly, is to talk about what the mystery hunt is all about because uh, the tradition of the mystery hunt is that the teams that win have fun, but the teams that maybe only solve one puzzle or 10 puzzles or maybe a meta puzzle have just as much fun. Uh, a great hunt is geared for all ranges of teams and solving abilities. So don't be intimidated, hopefully, by anything we've said in that, oh, I'm never going to win. I'm never going to solve a meta. I'm never going to do anything. That's, that's really not the point. We're, we're trying to make it uh, more accessible for you and thusly more fun and not to scare you in any way. So that's just something I did want to point out that uh, we kind of have glossed over that a little bit. And people are coming at it from teams of 50 and teams of five. And uh, so your experiences will be vastly different, but I guarantee if you do this, you'll, you'll have a great time, hopefully on many, many levels. Uh, Linda, do we have anything else? Uh, yeah, I think let's uh, wrap this up. I'm going to turn off the recording, but if anyone wants to just uh, hang out and chat a little bit more um, just casually, then maybe after I turn off recording, we'll uh, give everyone the ability to unmute themselves or they can keep talking in the chat and we'll hang out a little bit and answer some additional uh, just more friendly questions. I agree. Mystery Hunt is fun no matter how many puzzles you solve. <laughs> <laughs>